Los Angeles. Different. Boy, hot fire. That's it. Important. Main Street. Keep it real. We got one of the biggest things in American culture. Yeah. They not like us. I think everybody should go on the Breakfast Club. Yeah. You want to shake it up. They not like us. Wake the f*** up, Breakfast Club. DJ Envy. The people's choice, the family guy. Jess Hilarious. So my niece is real. And Charlemagne the God. Some donkey the days just start themselves. Yo, I'm loving that energy up there right now. Sometimes you gotta pop out this show to them. Now let's begin. Good morning, USA! Yo, 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 yo
Um, meanwhile, President Biden says Donald Trump can only be defeated at the ballot box. The Biden-Harris campaign right. made the comment shortly after the verdict was handed down. The campaign's communication director, Michael Tyler, said Trump has always mistakenly believed he would never face consequences for breaking the law for his own personal gain. And speaking of personal gain, Trump's fundraising website crashed after reportedly receiving an $800,000 donation following the verdict. The Trump campaign posted on X, so many Americans were moved to donate to President Trump's campaign that the win red pages went down. Now, that site was actually restored after about 30 minutes. Now, keep in mind, this does not disqualify Trump from being on the November ballot. Nope. Mm. That's yeah. crazy. That yeah. was literally my only question. Wow. But do people the prerequisites to be president in this country is the candidate just has to be a natural born citizen, at least thirty five years old, and a US resident for fourteen years. The the wild part for me on this is that um convicted felons rarely if ever get a chance to even work for the federal government. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Their voting rights are impacted. But I guess you can be president. So there you go. Yeah, I was going to ask, uh, does his core, do people follow him care at all if he Man, is found guilty not. or not? You know, <laughs> does it matter? So, so, so what does that's... it actually mean? You know what I mean? If, if, if that's the case. Well, no, nobody is above the law. So, mm-hmm. so, so I'm not, you know, mad that justice was served on that end. But, you know, like Morgan said, this don't change nothing because Trump can still run for president. And it's just going to mm-hmm. galvanize his base to go out there and support him more because he's going to play the political prisoner card. That's right. Like, and, and if you love people like Alvin Bragg, the best thing you can do is go out there and vote to keep Trump out of office because if he gets back in, he is definitely going to punish his political opponents and Alvin Bragg will be at the top of that list. Yeah, they said you once, believe that. once they said he, yeah. they, he's going to appeal, they said they're going to push back his sentencing and they said it's unlikely he, he's going to go to jail or anything's really going to happen. They're not going to give him community service. He's not going to be cleaning up trash on the West Side Highway. So mm-hmm. Probably get a fine, mm-hmm. some restitution. Mm-hmm. But uh, did y'all even expect for him to be uh, found guilty? No. Y'all didn't? Not yeah. at all. No. Well, also, I, I, didn't, I didn't expect him to even bring charges up against him in the first place. Mm-hmm. No. Yeah, no, nah, I didn't think he was going to be found guilty. Definitely, I didn't think so. And I mm-hmm. definitely don't think he's going to jail. But I all of this, to- I'm not going to say all of this is for nothing because, once again, you know, if nobody's above the law. But if you can still run and he can still become president of the United States of America, what does it even What is the point? And that's yeah. what I was saying. Like, yeah. his core is even going to go even harder for him. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's. it's but you know, I keep saying it's gonna come. It's gonna be the battle of the bases at the uh, at the polls this year. And you know, Trump's base is energized. Biden's base, not so much, because mm-hmm. a, a lot of Biden's base is upset of how he's handling Gaza. And you know, you're doing things like saying, "Hey, you know, uh, vote non-committed now." And mm-hmm. then in November, we're gonna switch the energy. You really think you're gonna be able to switch the, these kids' energy come mm-hmm. November? You really think you're gonna be able to switch people's mindset come November? You think people are that politically sophisticated? The, huh? the sad, we'll see. The sad thing about it is, most people I speak to don't like Trump. And they don't like Biden. Twenty five percent of America. Yeah, I mean, and they feel like one, one in four forced. Americans. They I'm feel, one of them. They feel like force, right? So yesterday I was I was talking to my, my pops, and I'm like, I'm, I'm just gonna vote independent. Why would you do that? That and it's and it's like, well, <laughs> I don't like Biden, and I don't like Trump. So what do you want what me to do? What does that mean? Yeah. You want to vote independent, though? What does that mean? I was just saying that to piss him off. I was saying I was oh. gonna vote for Doctor <laughs> Cornell West. I was just pissing him off. Yeah. But, I never on that though. But um. It's like when you don't like the two candidates, what do you do? Who do you, yeah. What, what do you do at that you point? You can't just not vote. Right. That's the point. Well, to, to your point, there are other candidates out there. You know, people don't ever give them a... You're going to burn your fingers. You what see, are you right? doing? People don't ever give them a chance in hell of winning. No, you know what I mean? not because, at all. And because, they don't have a chance in hell of winning. Well, that's because they tell us they can't. But if enough American people voted for third party candidates, that could work. Yeah, but mm. let's be truthful. Mm. It ain't going to happen. All right. Well, well thank, thank you, Morgan. We'll see you next hour. Yeah. And also, we didn't say uh, Dallas Mavericks beat the Minnesota Timberwolves yesterday, so they moved to the conference final. So, uh, salute to the Dallas Mavericks. Hey. Everybody else, get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. If you need to vent, hit us up right now. Phone lines are wide open. Again, 800-585-1051. Get it off your chest. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Wake up, wake up. Wake your ass this is your time to get it off your chest. Whether you're mad or blessed, we want to hear from you on The Breakfast Club. Hello, who's this? Yo, man, listen, man, this is Tone, Florida, man. Tone, what up? I, I don't want to, I, I want to get off my chest. Good morning, everybody, first of all. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. But you you mean to tell me Donald Trump could be a convicted felon and be a president, and Florida is his battleground state. So Florida will go vote a convicted felon in there to run the country. But I can't go be a fireman. I can't go. It's a lot of shit I can't. Excuse my language. It's a lot of things I can't do. And I had a white collar crime as well. So I'm trying to figure out, other than the fact that I'm black, 
and he white. Like, come on, man. America is a funny place, dog. This, ain't, this can't be life, man. It so, is life. It's life in America. And it's not even just the fact that you're black and you're white. It's the fact that he's a former president and there is nothing that stops... There's nothing in the Constitution that stops former presidents from being able to run from a, run for president with felonies. Tone, you can run for president, bro. But, but, uh, but he's not going to run. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, one more thing, one more thing, one more thing before you hang up here because I know you quit. Yes, sir. Hey, Jeff. Yes. Listen, I'm a comedian, right? Mm-hmm. And I live right here in New York. I host Hall of Night every Monday. I heard you say uh, a couple days ago last week that you, that you don't have an opener. Mm-hmm. And I know you at City Winery, so I'm going to just go ahead and tell you, let the Lord use you, man. She said she didn't have a, yeah, a opening for one show. Yeah, the Lord be using me. You got to ask the Lord to use you on my <laughs> show. <laughs> but, yeah. But um, I, I'm going to keep in mind your Harlem Nights, you know, because I actually would like to come to, like, some other comedy shows and not be the one having to perform for once. So, yeah. But, no, I just, that's that was in Charlotte. My brother couldn't make it because he had shows in Detroit. Oh, okay, okay. All right. Well, listen, Harlem Nights, every okay. Monday, mm-hmm. 6 p.m. The show starts, 5 p.m. The doors open. It's a free show. It's donation based. We always have headliners, mm-hmm. Smokey Suarez, Ashima Franklin, Rashad Bashir is the creator of it. Yeah. I'm the host. So, uh, you know, this is my, my, my invite. Come through any Monday that you're able to. Yeah, I'm going to check you out. Thank you. When they say donation, does that mean like if you good, you give a little more? But you if just you... Come, Yeah, you just come and give. Basically, you'll give us some money. Nah, I got you. Yeah, it's free, but give us some money. But free, but give us some yeah. money. Get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. If you need to vent, hit us up now. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Your time to get it off your chest, whether you're mad or blessed. So, so you got to have the same energy. We want to hear from you on the Breakfast Club. Hello, Angel. Hello. Good Hello. morning. Get it off your chest. Man, this is, I got a real problem with family right now. Like, I got a sister. I've been raising her kids for like nine months, and now this bride's about to just show up and take them from me. That's and cool. I just, I don't know what I'm supposed to do, man. Like, I don't want to fast. I got too much to lose, but. But that's her kids, though, right? Kids go. Yeah, they are. So you can't be mad she's taking her kids. Yeah. I mean, but she's not doing right by. Oh, oh, oh okay. She's well, call yeah, yeah, Dyfus. Yeah. Wow. Who? Huh? Call Dyfus. Who's that? Dyfus is the Child Protective, child protective services. services. Oh, oh okay, and I want to go that route. But then, like, I didn't, the kids already been through a lot. Like, I definitely need, like, more on them. Well, if, if the parent ain't if, if the parent ain't doing right, the kids gonna be traumatized either way. And you That's have right. to find a way to prove that because she could technically take her kids whenever she wants. From what, here. what is she not doing? And what what is she not doing? With, like she's not ten. They've been with me for nine months. She How probably gave me five hundred dollars total. How old are they? One is seventeen, and one just turned one. St. Patty's Day this year. Does she just drop them off at your crib and just left for nine months? She came. She showed up in Ohio out of nowhere. Is it crack? Um, okay, Judge Mathis. Yeah, halfway. halfway. Is it crack? Is it, oh, halfway crack? Halfway. Oh, coke. But, yeah, there you go. Oh, okay. Mm. She, ain't, she, she, she just ain't fried the cocaine yet. You know, cocaine okay. ain't number fried crack. Yeah, it sounds like she just need help. Is she trying to get help, rehab, mm-hmm. or anything like that? Yeah, that's why she called herself flying a coop. But then she gets out to where she's at and does nothing better. And then now she's just going to come and rip these kids from me. And mm. I got a real problem with that. I think you should have a conversation with her and let her know that you know that she has a problem and that she needs to go get her I tried that. She needs to, okay, well, if that didn't work, you should go to the courts and tell the courts, hey, I love my sister, but she has a problem. She needs to be in rehab. The kids need to be in my custody until she gets cleaned up. Yeah, I That's agree. Right. You don't want to leave them. That, I gotta, she had me go have a notarized paper to give me custody of the kids the um my oldest is in high school so but they tell me like it's a dummy paper like i'm trying to figure out if this paper even real legit or what but i had to have it sit and notarized with a notary and she has so to sign it to figure that out yeah we both did oh y'all both already did yes ma'am okay well then yeah you have to see well good luck angel yeah mm-hmm. appreciate it peace angel angel mm-hmm. trying to yeah. damn this yeah. To do right by them cheering. Hello, who's this? It's D from Detroit. What up, though? What up, though? Get up, it off D? your chest. Good morning. Good morning. So, uh, I believe that Donald Trump, Donald Trump ain't going to do nothing but pardon himself. 
Well, he can't. He can't pardon himself because that's a state crime, and he, he would have to pardon himself federally. So he, he can't. Would need, and he, he can't. Need the governor of New York to pardon him. And he can't pardon himself until he's president. Either. That's true. Too. <laughs> yeah. So he, yeah, he can't. Call, he can't pardon himself on a, on a state crime. He can do it on a federal level. Well, we know he's gonna be president. You know, the the, the numbers show that. And then, two, I think that everything that we going through as a country right now and dealing with when it comes to uh, how the presidency is ran is is a hundred percent wrong. Yeah. You, you, you're right about that. But you know what's going to be interesting? What's going to be interesting? What if Trump starts to lean into criminal justice reform? What if Trump says, now I know how black people feel. I've never experienced anything like this before. And I apologize that you all have had to deal with this. What if he starts to say how they need to change the criminal justice reform because nobody should have to go through this? There is so many ways he can spin this in his favor. What if he listens to the Breakfast Club and he just said, Charlamagne, that's a great idea. Let me go do that. I'm sure there's a million people around him that already thought of that. It's just, it's so, it's just and simple. Most, and most of y'all, most of y'all know that ain't gonna happen. And then the second of all, just to the, just to the point that I made earlier, how you can't even work for the government if you got a felony, but you can work for the presidency? This country should be ashamed of itself, bro. Yeah. Well, thank you, Dave. It's like y'all just woke up this morning and found out y'all in America. Chris, good morning. Hey, good morning, man. What's going on? I just want to, uh, Hey, good morning, y'all, man. Um, calling from the 843 uh, field. What's going on? 843, what's happening? I was home a couple days ago. Yeah, man, I was calling because I, uh, I ended up calling that morning of your uh, book signing in Charleston. And I uh, I came down there that night, man, um, get a book from you, man. And you were saying some powerful things that night, man. I just want to congratulate you on that, man. I appreciate that, brother. Yes, sir. But I do have a question, though. Is there any way I can... Um, is there any way I can get them uh, other two books? Any way you can lead me in the right direction to get them other two books? Yeah, Amazon, you know, Barnes and Nobles. Those are two directions. But I, I can... <laughs> if I have any in here, I might have some left in here. I'll send you Basically, some. Basically, yo, send them one, yo. Ain't no, nah, I'm going to send them one. I'm going to send them on, one. Yo, send them one. And I, I, I want to tell everybody, too, thank you, man, because, you know, uh, my new book, Get Honest or Die Lying, it debuted at uh, number nine on the USA Today. Uh, oh, my God, best, for best, real? Yeah, bestsellers charts, you know, so... Congrats. Thank you. Another bestselling book. I appreciate y'all very, very much. There you go. Nice. Congratulations. Want to hug? Nope. Get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. Now we got Jess with the mess coming up. What are we talking about? Yes. Miss Valletta Wallace said something about Diddy. That's Biggie Mother, just in case y'all don't know. Okay. All right. We'll get into that next. Don't move. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Well, morning, everybody. It's DJ NV uh -huh. Jess Hilarious. Charlamagne the guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Let's yep. get to Jess with the mess. News is real. Weather is hilarious. Jessica Robin Moore. Jess don't do no lies. Don't do no lies. Don't do no lies. Don't do no lies. She don't spare nobody. Worldwide Jess. Worldwide mess. On the Breakfast Club. She's a culture ship. She was able to get y'all to see something and understand something that nobody could get you to see. It's time to set it all. Okay, so earlier this week, I reported on the Rolling Stone investigative article about Diddy. The article has testimonies from over 50 of Diddy's former acquaintances and employees. One person spoke on Diddy being jealous of Biggie's relationship with Tupac. The article also touched on other complicated aspects of Diddy's relationship with most of um, Diddy's... Uh, relationship with Biggie and most of Diddy's allegations stemming all the way back to college. Um, after the release of the article, Rolling Stone spoke to Biggie's mom, uh, Valletta Wallace. She told them she feels sick, sick to her stomach about all of Diddy's allegations. And she said, in quotes, I hope that I see Sean one day. And the only thing I want to do is slap the daylights out of him. And you can quote me on that because I really <laughs> liked him. I didn't want to believe all the awful things, but I'm so ashamed and embarrassed. She also says she's not only uh, praying for Cassie, um, that she's praying for Cassie and she hopes that Diddy not only apologizes to Cassie but to his own mother for everything that he's done mm -hmm. spoken like a true black mama spoken Absolutely. like a true black grandma you mm -hmm. already you know, know. Mm -hmm. yeah. simple as that oh, I see you out here doing some BS now I want to smack fire out your dumb ass mm -hmm. especially a Caribbean mama yeah mm -hmm. yeah Ice T labels Lenny Kravitz nine year celibacy as weirdo ish. So Lenny Kravitz, <laughs> I know he a clown now because I don't like that. Lenny Kravitz recently told the Guardian that he is no longer interested in sex sexual flings mm -hmm. and has been celibate for nine years. He said that he wanted to remain celibate until he found the right woman and that it's also a spiritual thing for him. Ice T has some comments about what he said. So he took the Twitter, which is no, known now as X, and said, "Hey, if you're a guy and you can voluntarily go nine years without sex." You're following the wrong page. So a fan rescinded, uh, responded 
to what I see said and said, why you judge him though? And I see then said, the S is weird to me. I love the F a lot. Okay. Now, Ice-T is the same person who said back in May that when it comes to rap beef, he's only focused on the bag. He's not interested in current rap beef or random male gossip. I'm a hustler. I'm only focused on the bag. That don't sound too focused on the bag right yeah, there. Yeah, very much. Like, why are you worried about it? Like, please, shut up. Exactly. Tell your wife. And then Ice-T is different because he has a wife. He's married. So, yeah, of course, it's, you know, I like Lenny Kravitz is, Okay, that's cute. Lenny yeah. said he's looking for the right woman. What's wrong yeah, with that? Yeah, that's what he did. And even when Gail took her shot, he was like, um, no. You know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. maybe he felt like Gail wasn't the right one. But he responded to another person on Twitter and said, F that journey, LOL. But uh, I say, don't be a clown. Ice T, you said you're a hustler. You said you only focused on the bag. You said you're not interested in current rap beef or random male gossip. So don't be interested in uh, Lenny Kravitz not pumping nothing for nine months. Yeah. It, or not nine no, months, nine, nine years. years. Yeah. yeah. Voluntarily, some people do, you know, things for their own spiritual journey, and mm -hmm. that's one of them. Um, ben Affleck and Jennifer, this is just an update on Ben and Jen. Mm -hmm. So, yesterday, you know, they were reunited um, for his daughter Violet's graduation festivities. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's just a, a little update because yesterday I was talking about them and everything, you know, their relationship struggles and marital struggles and everything. So, just in case y'all want to follow that story. Okay. Okay. And then Eminem mentions Meg the Stallion in a new song. So, he dropped a song called Houdini, and in the song, he mentions Meg. <laughs> so just in case you couldn't catch that because he rapping like Slim Shady baby mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, he said if I was to ask for Meg Thee Stallion if she would collab with me would I really have a shot at a feat um He's saying feature, but feature, you know yeah. it was it was a little it was a play on the word. Yeah. I feel like that boss supposed to hit, but it didn't. It, well, it, 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 like it sound like it should be good, but it felt like a reach a little bit too. <laughs> you know what I mean? Maybe if he'd have dropped it earlier. And I guess the word feet is a word that you gotta see. Like like when you see like yeah. like uh, Cardi B and uh, gr featuring uh, Megan Stallion and Gorilla, Gorilla feet mm. Cardi B you know it means featuring, featuring. when mm. you hear it it don't hit the same mm. so it's like what do you mean mm. you have a shot at her feet what's he trying to say but you, I guess if you, you watch know the exactly video exactly what the hell he trying to say but uh, but yeah yeah it just it it feel like it was supposed to hit but it didn't but it mm. it missed like it was right there. Like it, it was almost right there, connected. but almost it, yeah. Like it was right there. Yeah. Did y'all see the video? Yeah, I didn't see the video. Nah, yet. I see the oh, video. he got a video? video. Yeah, he got a video and everything. Yeah. Oh my god. Dr. Yo, Dre's in the video. Uh, 50s in the video. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Mm. Well. Like it's, yeah. It's just like right. You know how like you see a bid and it looked like mm -hmm. it connect all the way, but then mm -hmm. it be like a blank, like a, just like one little bald spot. Mm -hmm. That's how it felt. That's what it felt. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Well, one other rap news, real quick. Uh, Charlemagne feels that Cardi B took shots at Bia. So the wannabe remix huh? that came out with Cardi, Megan, Glow that dropped the day. You know, he was speculating that maybe that Cardi took a shot at Bia. We had those bars as well. She did what? Had no idea. idea. She was on the shelf like Kia. Kia. Put a stop like that when I see her. She said, please, don't nobody want to be her. She was looking asshole. Weak looking asshole. Great value. Me looking asshole. Girl, these are different. Delete every tweet looking asshole. Didn't hear it. I don't know. You crazy. You, you didn't hear it? Yeah, I just feel like they said like, Bia came at Cardi on that uh that that uh Dreezy record. Tell us, girl. Why is that? Tell them, girl. This is hip hop. I'm listening. I'm tell us, girl. Very misogynistic when it comes to hip hop. I'm just saying, tell us, girl. That's disgusting. You know what I mean? You a chatty patty? How's that chatty patty? Tell us, girl. I don't know. This is hip hop. About no Dreezy. Um, yeah, Bia had, Bia had threw a shot at, allegedly threw a shot at Cardi on uh, mm. what's that record called? <laughs> Bitch duh or something like that. Oh, okay. Okay. That's what it was called, right, Red? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then she came, she came back with a Bia. Oh, okay. Bia. So it was just a little light bar. A little, little light bar. A little, little, okay. little, yeah. little something. A little something. A little light jab. Yeah. My dumb ass. I thought you said, don't nobody want to be ya. Like, be y'all. No, like, be uh. Be. Like, be her, be yeah. uh. Be oh, y'all. started it off by saying, I guess I'm your teacher because you subbing me. Yeah. And then she did the whole ear, ear thing. And then I ended have no it with idea. Something she was talking about a local nigga. Okay. She was talking about a local nigga. <laughs> okay. Well, that's just what the Slick bars, first, though. So. Yes. Yeah. Very yeah. slick bars, buddy. Now All that right. I know where it comes from. Okay. All right. When we come back, we got front page news, so don't move. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. You're checking out The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, just hilarious. Charlamagne the God. We are The Breakfast Club. Let's get in some front page news. Now, quickly, just Dallas Mavericks beat the uh, Timberwolves last night, 124 to 103, so they move on to the finals. NBA that a, Finals. That was a good game. You didn't watch it because it wasn't a good game. They got blown up. They got blown up. Crazy. Mavs got their ass beat down. Mm -hmm. It was bad. So like, did you watch it? 
Yeah, the Mavs won. Yeah, the Mavs won. I mean, yeah, you, you ain't watching. Yeah, the, the, yeah, the Wolves got their ass beat. Yeah, yeah. That's what I meant to say. Listen, I ain't get off a plane until 1230 last night. I'm tired. <laughs> but yeah, the Mavs busted their ass. Sure did. It was like a fight on baddies. You know how on baddies when a girl be getting their ass beat down? Mm -hmm. That's how it was. When you be Timber watching Wolves. it, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, well, good morning, Morgan. Good morning, good morning. Yeah, so in case you missed it in the first hour, former President Donald Trump has been found guilty of all 34 counts in his New York criminal hush money case. He was convicted by a jury of his peers of falsifying records before the 2016 election to hide payments to adult film star Stormy Daniels. He is the first president in U.S. history to stand trial in a criminal, criminal case and be convicted. Um, Trump is scheduled to be sentenced in July, I believe July 11th, just days before the Republican Party officially nominates a candidate. He is expected to appeal. Elsewhere, millions of older Americans are still struggling, younger too, with student loan debt. A new survey from the Federal Reserve Board found 2.2 million Americans over the age of 55 has student loan debt they're still trying mm. to pay off. Yeah, in a Black Information Network exclusive, I spoke with Education Secretary Miguel Cardona on why he believes there's still a need, despite the administration issuing multiple rounds of relief. Let's hear from Mark. It's because the system has been broken for decades and nobody's touched it, right? Uh, we have a higher education system in this country that has rewarded wealth versus intelligence and capability. We have too many students in this country who choose not to go to college because of the fear of the cost. Um, so we are unapologetic about leveling the playing field here. 4.7 million, and that's with Republicans working hard to strike down and, and the Supreme Court striking down the largest plan that the president put forward. So we're not done. We're back at it. Uh, we recognize that we have a broken system that we need to fix so that, you know, when we talk about equality and, and the ability to succeed and addressing achievement disparities in our country, we recognize that higher education is a pathway forward to doing that. So we're, we're opening the doors of college access and affordability. Mm. 55 still with, with yeah, student I, loans. In it's fact, crazy. roughly half of the borrowers in that age range um, average about $58,000 that they owe Jess. So um, in this latest round of uh, student debt relief, uh, public servants qualified for this later, latest round. So that means teachers, police officers, EMTs, waste management professionals, basically if you work for the city, state, things of that nature, um, and then tens of thousands who have also signed up for Biden's loan uh, repayment p uh, plan or program called SAVE. Hmm. You know, I, I, I always felt like if you was a public servant, like an essential worker, like those people you just named, the police officers, the, the I guess I think you said firefighters, the teachers, yeah. they should get their student loans wiped away just because mm -hmm. they, they chose public service. Yeah. And you know what they do for us as a society on a daily basis is that important. They should get their student loans wiped out. If you're an essential worker, if you're, if you're considered an essential worker, public servant, you should get your student loans wiped away. Yeah, I agree. Does that include journalists? I'm no. Get into that. Okay. Um, <laughs> so on the last day of Mental Health Awareness Month, I'd like to share a resource available for new mothers experience mental health issues. The Health Resources and Services Administrator Carol Johnson says when someone calls their hotline, they'll be speaking to a counselor who can relate to their issues. That's real audio on Ms. Johnson. Often there are, there are women with lived experience of um, having had um, mental health or emotional support needs during their pregnancies as well. We're partnering with hospitals, working to make sure this is part of the information that people get when they leave the hospital after they've just delivered, connecting with OBs to make sure it's part of the information that gets shared with people during prenatal care and postnatal care. Yes, so HRSA data shows that one in eight women who are new mothers experience some sign of depression. Johnson says the hotline is not only available for new mothers, but their families as well as their partners. Now, the hotline operates 24-7, and that number is 1-833-TLC-MAMA, M-A-M-A, 1-833-TLC-MAMA. Hmm. And that's your front page news. I'm Morgan Wood. You can follow me at, on social media at Morgan Media and check out more news coverage at Black Information Network and BINnews.com. Thank, thank, thank you, Morgan. Morgan. Have a great weekend. Thank you, guys. <laughs> See ya. All right. Thank you, Morgan. Well, let's open up the phone lines. 800-585-1051. If you're just joining us, Donald Trump was found guilty of all 34 charges. Now, yeah, 34, 34 counts of falsifying business records in his uh, hush money criminal trial. That's right. Now, he's going to be sentenced in July, but it might be pushed back because he is going to appeal. They expect appeal. So let's open up the phone lines. All the Trump supporters out there. I want to talk just to the Trump supporters right now. Does this change your view on Donald Trump? 
And 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 the reason I say that because we know Trump supporters they ride with Donald Trump through mm-hmm. thick and thin. It don't matter what he say. It don't matter what he do. But now that you see him being convicted, a felony, a felony, thirty four counts. Mm-hmm. I want to know what's on your mind. Are you still gonna vote for him in November? Do you think it's a witch hunt? You know, do you, do you, do you think what's happening is wrong? Do you think what's happening is right? I just want to know. I want to know. I really want to talk to the Trump supporters this morning. I want to know how y'all feeling. 800-585-1051. Let's discuss this. The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. It's topic time. Call 800-585-1051 to join into the discussion with The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Jess Hilarious, Charlamagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. So if you're just joining us, we've been talking about Donald Trump all morning long. Now, if you're just joining us, he yesterday was found guilty of 34 charges. So he's a convicted felon. So we're asking 800-585-1051 if you're a Trump or if you're a Trump supporter, does this change your view on Donald Trump, right? Well, for, and four things to remember about this situation. Uh, Donald Trump is still going to be the Republican nominee. Um, uh, I'm one of those people that thinks, you know, Trump's base is probably going going to stick with him, right? But that's why this conversation is so interesting because you could say it was a witch hunt all before, but now that he's been convicted in a court of law, is it still a witch hunt to you? You, you, uh-huh. you know what? Um, Talking to people who like Joe Biden feel like this is a great thing. Now, people are going to see the true colors. People are going to see the true thing, but I, I don't think so. I, I think his either. core is still going to ride with him. It's going to make him mm-hmm. ride even harder because they're going to feel like it was a witch hunt. They're going to feel like he was convicted unfairly, and they're going to go even harder for this man. Yeah. Well, I said that on Fox News this week. Uh, no, yeah, it was on Gutfeld. I said, you know, I, I just feel like a lot of times the left spend so much time talking about how bad Trump is, they don't never talk about the good things that President Biden has done. So when the uh, President Biden's base says things like, well, what has Biden done? What has Harris done? Well, the reason a lot of people don't know is because you don't tell them because you're too bad talking about how bad Trump is. Yeah, we know Trump probably used the N-word before. Yeah, Trump is a convicted felon. But guess what? He's still running for president, and I believe his base is still going to support him, but I guess we're about to go to the phones to find out. That's right. We got Mm -hmm. Dana on the line. Dana, good morning. Good morning, good morning. Where are you calling from, Dana? I am calling from Texas. How are you? Okay, Texas. You're blessed, black, and highly favored. How are you? What part of Texas? I heard Dallas got Dallas and Houston got hit pretty hard the last couple of days. Houston. Oh, Houston. But y'all all right? You got your power back? Everything all right? Yeah, yeah. It's good out here. Okay. All right. Now, let's talk about Donald hi, Trump. Hi, Jess. Hi, Charla. Hey, Peace, girl. peace, peace. Now, you a Trump supporter, mama? Um, yeah. I, I feel like, and I'm black, too, but... Yeah, I feel like we, Trump's a cool dude. Yeah, we yeah. knew he was black. Yeah, we got, I, we guessed that. So yesterday he was found guilty of 34 charges. He's a convicted felon. So does that make you ride for him more? Does it change the, your views on him? What do you think? No, it really don't change. I feel like well, I used to watch The Liberty Apprentice, and I'm, I'm not big on politics, but I used to watch The Liberty Apprentice, and I always thought he was a cool dude on there. I mean, when he was in office, we weren't really... War, warring with other people, you know what I'm saying? He had Putin under his little finger or whatever. I mean, they talk a lot of crap about Trump, but I mean, we had a little bit of money when Trump was in office. It, it just reminds me of the Clinton era. Like, Clinton had Monica Lewinsky. He did this little thing with Stormy Daniels. We had money when Clinton was in the office. I well, we had we, we had we had we had we had money with Clinton uh, for a different reason than we had money with Trump. I think people will often forget that you know millions of people had to die in order for folks to get those stimulus checks and those PPP loans. It wasn't something that he just gave you out of the goodness of his heart or because the economy had a surplus. You know, it was because it you know it was a, it was a relief for a pandemic, COVID. Yeah, that's true. But Dana said you said you see him on Apprentice and he seemed like a cool dude on Apprentice. Yeah. Okay. True, true. I, I'm, <laughs> not, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. This, this is the problem I have with folks. They I like to, you like to argue with people about what their political opinions are. For whatever reason, people choose to support whoever they choose to support. Fine. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I like him when he was a Home Alone too. You like him? He's he really good. Shoot, <laughs> but mad people like Biden because he was Barack Obama's apprentice. Mm. <laughs> mm. But that's still political. That's political. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, who's this? David L. Shaw, man. How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? Man, you sound like a you sound like a law firm. A law <laughs> officer. David L. Shaw. Where you from, David? Man, 
I'm from born and raised in Houston, sir. Houston, okay. Nice. So what's your thoughts on Donald Trump and the fact that he's a, a convicted felon now? Does that change your views on him? No, sir. I am a convicted felon, man. I'm still the best guy that I know. <laughs> I love that. I love that, King. I'm with That's you. right. You're the best guy that you know. Not That's exactly that, how you should feel. Not only that, man. The conviction don't make you a bad guy, man. My conviction made me a better person. Me too. My conviction mm. made me a person with morals and principles. My conviction made me the guy that I am today. Make me still want to do right and do for others. But it's just, it's like it's a, it's a, it's a losing battle, bro. Everybody wants something for nothing. Everybody want to keep screwing me. I'm the bad guy. Mm. I lost my job. I'm steady helping people get back and forward to the same job. I'm still Uber and lift the people back and around for free, and I'm still getting screwed. I helped this one chick get a car. I paid her insurance so she can get off. Oh, she high caps. You still not getting the money. I get the money. Woo woo woo. I'm finding charge on this. I'm doing that. Hey, man. Conviction might be the best thing to happen. It might make him a better person. So this, I mean, so long story short, long story short, it's not going to stop you from supporting Donald Trump. Still in there. Yes, sir. No. They still in there. Are we getting the ride right now? Are hey, I'm, I'm right gonna, now? hey, I want to give you a, I'm gonna give you a website, man. Uh, go to mentalwealthalliance.org and hit the contact us button and reach out to somebody because I do think you probably need to talk to somebody because I heard a lot of you. you you, you you vented a little bit. You need to talk to somebody. Getting it off his chest. Hey, man, yeah. I, I try to call all the time when you say get it off your chest. Every day, okay. it's like something that needs to be getting off my chest. Yeah, so, that, 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 I'm offering you some free therapy, right, sir. Go right. to mentalwealthalliance.org and hit contact us and, and, and put in, in the subject that you're the guy who called Breakfast Club and was angry. And tell your passenger we said good morning. He was not. Yes, sir. Thank you, man. God bless you. And God bless you. And remember, Ken, you're always in a relationship with yourself, so stay committed to loving yourself and evolving, man. I like your attitude. We can't talk because he got a passenger in the back seat. No, because you hung up on him. Damn, we already got a bad review now. Yeah, And before you go, like. Yeah, he's trying to mellow it out. That's what he said. God bless you. Have a good one. Yeah. All right. 800 585 1051. We're asking if you uh, supported Trump before. Now, the fact that he's a convicted felon. Does that change your view at all? Let's discuss. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. If y'all talking about it, you know we talking about it. It's topic time. Call 800-585-1051 to join into the discussion with the Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Jess Hilarious, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. If you're just joining us. We're talking about Donald Trump, all right? Yesterday, he was found guilty of all 34 charges. He's a convicted felon. Mm -hmm. So we're asking, if you were a Trump supporter before, does this change your view on Trump? 800-585-1051. Hello, who's this? What up, man? It's TK. TK, what what's up? Good morning, brother. Peace, TK. What up, Charlamagne? What up, Jeff? What up? What's your thoughts, brother? Well, I'm going to tell you, man. I feel like Trump got gay dirty. And I don't trust the system at all. You know what I mean? Um, especially being through the system. I'm the same one that called yesterday about that dog situation. So it's like, after you've been railroaded by this system, and you see that when you walk in the courtroom, they want you to be guilty. You're going to be guilty. I don't got no trust in that process at all. You know what I mean? I rock with Trump. I feel like that he um he way better than Biden. You know, Biden, I can't stand him. Biden the devil, man. Biden the same one. Y'all remember the policies from the 90s? I know y'all got family members that was victim of that. Yeah, the, 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 eighty, the eighty-six, the eighty-six mandatory minimum sentencing, eighty-eight uh, crack laws, ninety-four crime bill. Yeah, 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 for sure. Okay. Well, thank you, TK. Cool. That went away behind that nonsense. And so, how can anybody black vote for Biden? The antics that those people take—he going to black cookouts all of a sudden. He doing all this stupidness. It's like a slap in the face. I respect Trump because at least Trump real. But, real. But he, might, you, he, gonna, he might sound stupid. He's not articulate. Whatever. My quality of life was better under Trump. We didn't have all these problems at the border under Trump. We didn't have none of this going on. But I do think well, Trump, Trump is a narcissist, and I think he's going to be in a position where he is going to be his way or the highway. I think he's going to go on a revenge tour if he does, and I don't think he necessarily listens to opinions. I think he does what he wants to do, and I don't think that's a great thing for the country can, as well, though. Can I ask you a question, sir? You know, we, we, we talk about yeah. the policies that... Uh, uh, the President Biden implemented in the late 80s and the 90s, you know, very racist policies that impacted our community. But you also got to think about a lot of the racist things that President, I mean, not, well, he wasn't the president then, but President Trump did in the 90s, you know, whether it was what he was doing with his 
uh, his, his tenants, right? We're not letting what, black people stay in some of his yeah, buildings. Yeah, mm-hmm. whether it was what he did with the Central Park Five by taking that out of the, like, the paper. He's yep. shown racism too. So when you're talking about two white men, they both racist. <laughs> you know me. what I'm saying? Well, but look at but look at the difference. Look at one of these racists made policies that actually affected lives. That mess what Trump had going on, his buildings, his his talking about the Central Park Five, that had nothing to do with life. That so, that was small. That's so, small. So but you when you look at Biden making actual policy oh, that no, affected I, I, people. I, I, I'm with you. Right. But now this person that was racist in the 90s is going to potentially be president of the United States of America again. So you don't think that he's going to implement policies that will be racist? I'm just asking questions. I'm just playing white devil's advocate. No, oh, okay. not at all. Not at all. Because cause when Trump was in office, I didn't have the problems I have now at all. I don't think it was ever about a black and white with Trump. It's definitely about a black and white with Biden. Okay. All right. I'm just having a conversation, y'all. I'm not here to, you know, I'm not here to knock you for whatever decision you choose to make in November. I'm just having a conversation. All right, eight hundred five eight five one zero five one. Hello, who's this? Yo, yo, yo. What up, baby? What up, baby? Yeah, I can't believe I got through, man. This DJ Bob Polo man, stop such you PA, man. What's up, brother? We talking? <laughs> so you a Trump supporter, man? Does the fact that he's a convicted felon does that change your views, bro? Not at all, man. I got plenty of homies who who have felonies who are good people, man. Who are good people. Okay. All right. So you got good folk, man. Are you are you voting? Are you voting? Are you voting, are you voting in November? Absolutely. I voted last time. Who'd you vote for last time? time before that. For Trump. I did. Who'd I did. You, I voted for him. The, listen, the first time he got in, I didn't vote for him, but the second time I did. Oh, so you voted for Hillary in 2016? Nah, I wrote in Bernie Sanders. I ain't even going to front. How the hell you Oh, you wrote in Bernie Sanders. Okay, so you wrote in Bernie I wrote Sanders. wrote in Bernie Sanders. I voted Bernie Sanders. You voted 2020 yeah. for Trump, and this year you're going to vote for Trump again? Yes, sir. Let me, let me get right to the meat and potatoes, baby. Okay. Listen, man. I'd rather have a president, right, who's going to be honest. And show me that he's an a-hole than have a president who's going to lie to me to try to gas me up to get my vote, man. He came on in and said, oh, if, if you don't vote for me, you're not black. Hold up. What, Biden? What are you talking about? Like, you know what I mean? Come on, man. Even even Charlotte, man, I felt, I felt it in your voice when you heard that. You was you stuttered real quick. Like, oh, you, I didn't, you, I didn't you, stutter you at all. I, every day. I didn't you, stutter you, at all. I felt the vibrations through the airwaves, brother. I'm telling you. You, oh, you, you, you was ready to say something like if we was yeah, behind closed doors. The, the oh, no, 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 no. Trust me. If I, if I felt like uh, I wanted to say something to him, I would have said something to him in that moment. But really, my reaction was exactly what, what I felt. It's not about, you know, uh, Trump. It's about you doing something for, for black people. That's li- literally, yeah, what, that's he, literally what it was. Didn't he sign that bill for the black colleges to get their money for 10 years straight that they don't have to come back crying to the government, pleading, trying to get that every other year like they always do? We got to be, we got, we, 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 them, got, we got to be factual. The Biden Harris administration has given more money to HBCUs than anybody. It's not about more. I'm talking about 10 years straight. 10 years straight. I don't know nothing about they, that. They don't have, they don't have the actual money. Ten years straight, they could get their money that they asking for. He signed that bill. I don't know the name of it off the top of my head, but I know he signed that bill. Yeah, I don't know anything about that. Thank so. you, Marta, good morning. Good morning. Hey, good morning. So we're asking, uh, you're a Trump supporter. We're asking the fact that he's a convicted felon. He was convicted of 33, uh, 34 counts yesterday. Uh, does that change your view on Donald Trump? Well, my family is a Trump supporter, and I think I'm probably going to end up voting for him because he's already getting away with murder. So, I mean, what else can we do in this country? Vote for somebody. It's, some- it's <laughs> so twisted. You can, you, can always vote, you can always vote for somebody who's not going to get away with murder. There's other options. <laughs> you, don't, you don't, I know that. I, I know that, but at this point, you know, Biden is not that good either, and my family's already voting for Trump, so I'm thinking, you know, if anything else would be better, anybody else would be better, but okay. Boy, nobody stepped up. Boy, you know? de- Democrats, y'all in trouble come November. And this is why I keep saying over and over, you cannot Why spend, you say y'all? Because I'm talking to the media right now, especially oh, okay. the left media and all of these left personalities. Like, you got to stop focusing so much on how bad Donald Trump is. Yeah, you can run all the stories about Donald Trump using the N-word. You can run, he got uh, convicted of 34 counts. All of that is accurate news. But at some point, you got to start talking about the good things that President Biden and, and, and Kamala Harris are doing. Because we're not getting enough of that. 
So being that we're not getting enough of that, all people see is Trump, 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 Trump. And believe it or not, top of the mind awareness, I have them in the voter booth doing what? Voting Trump, 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 Trump. Y'all better start talking about the good that uh Biden is doing and stop focusing so much on the negative Trump is doing. Okay, well, touche. Well, tell us some of the good that that President Biden and Kamala's doing. Uh that's not my job. Yeah, and I'm not doing that right now. I'm just saying, I'm but I, I'm not, that's not my job, and I'm not doing that right now. But there's things that I like. I like the fact that they capped, uh, you know, the insulin at a certain price. I like the student loan debt relief that they're doing. I like the money that they've given to HBCUs. I do like, you know, uh, how they how they've energized small businesses, yes. small, especially small black businesses after the after the COVID pandemic. So those are things that I'm 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 interested in. Those are things that I am I enjoy and appreciate. They helped the uh, what, what 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 it was the ATM and credit card late fees and percentages on that. They helped with that. Yes, I've heard about that as well. But those, those four things that I listed, those are things that I actually appreciate. But once again, you have to start talking about the good that Biden is doing and stop talking about how bad Trump is. Because guess what? Everybody knows how bad Trump is. And more importantly, nobody cares. <laughs> That's not going to stop those people from voting for him. Yes. Is there anything that you like? Get all this or die line. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> because I'll please get it. All right, we got just with the best coming up. What are we talking about? Yes, they trying to sue Madonna because not even they. It's this man that's trying to sue Madonna because at the concert they said that she promotes pornography without letting them know. It's Madonna. That's what I'm saying. Madonna so was get... sexy red before sexy red. Right. No, so we're gonna get sexy into white. it. Well, we we're gonna get we're into sexy it. white. Ew. We'll talk we about it. Get next. Into it. Sexy white. Ew. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. You... Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Jess Hilarious, Charlemagne the guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Good morning. Oh shoot. Right. Hey, salute to everybody uh, who came out yesterday in Atlanta, man. We had a great conversation uh, at. First Decatur Church, the mm-hmm. no, First Baptist Church of Decatur with Eagle Eye Bookshop. Drop on the clues bombs for Eagle Eye Bookshop. Salute to Miss Basketball, man. Christina Basketball, mm-hmm. fantastic job she did moderating. Our guy, Louis V, everybody at 96.1, uh, the beat in Atlanta, man. Um, thank you for coming out for my book signing, for getting honest or die trying, why small talk sucks. I will be in D.C. next on June 4th at the Ark with books for sale by Mahogany Books at 7 p.m. So go to whysmalltalksucks.com right now to get your tickets for that. 7 p.m. Eastern at the Ark with books for sale by Mahogany Books in Washington, D.C. And can I say one thank you to everybody, man? I want to say thank mm-hmm. you to everybody who's gone out and bought a copy of my new book, my third book, Get Honest or Die Lying, Why Small Talk Sucks. You know I'm a New York Times bestseller. Mm-hmm. And uh, yesterday... I found out that Get Honest to Die Lying, Watch Small Talk Sucks debuted at number nine on USA Today's hey. uh, best selling book list. Drop a bomb. That's right. So thank you, man. I, I, I do not take it for granted in any way, uh, shape, or form. I truly thank God for it all. So, Absolutely. Yes, I and appreciate salute, you. Salute to uh, Louis V and Miss Basketball for uh, out in Atlanta. Uh, good people. I'll dunk on Miss Basketball. No, you can't dunk on her. I'll dunk on her right now. Great people, but they can't bowl. They put us all on the same bowling team, and we were going against Ferrari, and I realized Miss Basketball and Louis V cannot bowl. Oh, well, well Miss Basketball too tall. To, to I don't bowl. think y'all realize you can't be a tall bowler. The best bowlers are short. The best bowlers are five, six, or lower. You too tall. You think about how far you far you got to get down to roll that ball on the um on the on the, on the lane. Mm. Yeah, but you, you need have, a short baller. Did you try bowler. to post her up by any chance? No, because I ain't know her like that. So oh, I, okay. you know, I met her before. You know what I'm saying? I met her one time at my man John Hope Bryant's Operation uh, Hope event that he does in December. Mm-hmm. So I don't know her like that. But next time. <laughs> oh, next time she getting crossed. <laughs> oh, here he yeah, I hope she, she already know, too. Oh, boy. All right. basketball. Phenomenal talent she is, by mm-hmm. the way. Great talent. Christina Basketball. She need to be on somebody's radio. She was mm-hmm. on the radio in Atlanta, but she got fired. Like all the greats, greats do at some point. Mm-hmm. She's, she's a very good talent. All right. So, Louie, I don't know what you're waiting on. Uh-huh. The higher on 96.1 is what I'm saying. Louis V. Okay. But he can't do that without you know, <laughs> the powers that. He's just throwing it on and Louis V. Like, oh, man. oh no, he, I'm, I'm saying I'm sure he he's wants already. to do it, but no, you know, you got you know, a lot of a lot of eyes got to be dotted and yes, T's got to be crossed and things like that. Correct. But you know, I just don't understand why great talent like that isn't all over you know our radio stations. That's what I'm saying. Well, so. Just let Louis V. cook. 
He's been cooking. Louis B can't cook by himself. He's cooking. Let okay. him cook. He's cooking. He's putting he can't his plate, cook he's by himself. He's cooking. He's cooking. But salute to Miss Basketball. Great talent you are. All right. Now, when we come back, we got Jess with the mess. So don't move. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Mess up some words. Love infection. Right? We can miss yeah, it. I don't know what he said. Wrong direction. I don't right? know. Uh, 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 it's about the feeling, uh, 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 man. It's about the feeling. No. Once it's you know the cadence, the you say whatever you want. That's right. You know what I'm saying? No, no. That's man throw power. Come on now. Just get to Jess with the mess. Just get to Jess with the mess. On the Breakfast Club. She's a culture ship. She was able to get y'all to see something and understand something that nobody could get you to see. It's time to set it all. Okay, so Fan Files lawsuit against Madonna. So she's being sued by a fan who claims he was deceived by her Celebration World Tour. A man named Justin Lipales, or Lipales, just Justin L. I don't know. <laughs> Justin Lipales. <laughs> yeah, he filed a class action suit against Madonna and Live Nation that alleges that they tricked concert goers into buying expensive tickets to our shows held in February and March that purposely and deceptively w- withheld information in its marketing. Listen to how ridiculous this sounds. He claims that they failed to inform ticket purchasers that the singer's scheduled shows would not start on time as promised. Okay? That's very popular. The filing also accuses Madonna and Live Nation of maintaining a hot and uncomfortable temperature in the venue. Excuse me? What do you mean? Because it's so hot and uncomfortable here. I'm, you know, I'm going to sue you. What? Justin claims Madonna lip synced for most of the show and added concert goers were forced to watch topless women simulate sexual acts on stage during Madonna shows, subjecting them to pornography without warning. So what she was supposed to be like, <laughs> all right, look, if y'all ain't trying to like see this part, y'all can get y'all got time to leave. It's Madonna. It's Madonna. What are we talking about? Madonna was sexy red before sexy red. Exactly. What okay. was she? What was I, I, sexy white, I guess. That is but, so pure, but, but that is so funny to me. So she had topless dancers on her show? Yeah, it's just topless women. Yeah, like she got dances. You know, she's you a vogue, like you queen. Like she, you know. It probably was during the song "As Sex," maybe. Who yeah. knows? But I know you got tap topless dances on stage. Dancing. Maybe during the song "Erotica." Who knows? Like it's Madonna. And it could have been a presentation because you know, like she has the screens and stuff like that. It, it, been, it had to be blocked. The nipples had to be blocked. Something I don't Man. know. Pasties, whatever. Yeah, pasties. Yeah. But the fan is suing for unspecified damages for breach of written contract, negligent misrepresentation, emotional distress, unfair competition. Oh, please. Unfair competition. Oh, is he competing with them? I, that's what I'm saying. I'm like, what do you feel like? You ugly? You know? <laughs> he wanted to be out there with his titties. Yes. Out. Yes. And false advertisement. Madonna's team has not responded yet and probably never will. But that's just that's just if, the, if, the lawsuit. If, if I went to a Madonna show and didn't see something sexual, if I went to a Madonna show and didn't see topless people, I would people, I would be upset. I would see. That's what I expect from yes. a Madonna show. It's Madonna. Like, what are you talking about? Okay, so listen, I'm tuning in, y'all. Worldwide mess. So, homeless people in Scotland are being displaced. Okay, so the homeless people in Edinburgh, Scotland, are being shuttled out of the city in, prep- in preparation for Taylor Swift's tour. The homeless community Damn. in Scotland is... <laughs> what? Taylor Swift don't want no homeless people there? <laughs> no, like, no, no, no. Get all of these no, people no. out before I come to the city. <laughs> no, that That's crazy. That's not what it is. Listen, so the homeless community... <laughs> That tells like if you don't get all these peasants out of this city before <laughs> no, I get here. No, I'm that's sure not that's what it is. Listen, the homeless community in Scotland is typically given tourist accommodations as housing, but they're now being sent out of the city to make room for the influx of people and expecting to show up for Taylor's three night of concert or three night concert. So they kick not kicking them out, but moving them. Yeah, they, they just them. yeah. Okay. yeah okay. The director of a Scottish nonprofit organization dedicated to sheltering the homeless is fighting the injustice and but makes it clear that they have no problem with Taylor Swift because she's not the one that ordered this mm-hmm. like you know what I mean this is uh, their problem they believe that the country should be able to host a, uh, such a major event without creating a huge impact on the city's homeless population and they said that Taylor Swift isn't to blame again um, it's because of the decades of underinvestment in social housing mm. so that's crazy 
I mean, I guess, you know, in a way you salute to Scotland for at least having some type of housing for yes. homeless people in the first yeah, place. Yeah, I love that. And salute to them for at least caring enough mm-hmm. to say, hey, this is what we're going to be doing now, so we're yeah. going to move you someplace Makes else. Sense. It's yep. going to be overcrowded yep. when she comes. She's doing three days of shows, so yeah. instead of throwing them in the street and, or them being oh, displaced, yeah, yeah, yeah. find a place for them and make out, them comfortable. Outside the city. And yep. Can I get some tickets? I know. They, can I get this place? Can I get it some? I at least want to go to the show. Yeah, if yeah, I gotta it. get out of, if I gotta, I like you know. Taylor Swift too. No, no, no. You're asking too much now. Yeah, that's, why? that's the least go for like you can do. Five hundred dollars a ticket. They, 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 no, they probably said the least we can do is put you in a little bit of, is put you in up in a nice little, you know, little yeah. hut yeah. outside of a the city. Hut. Yeah, I mean, or whatever. <laughs> we are gonna give a little place to stay. <laughs> yes, right. <laughs> and uh, uh, real quick, I want to give a shout out to Vince Staples. Um, his show was renewed for a second season at Netflix. So drop a clues bomb for him because I remember. Yep. I remember when he was up here, he was telling us about. Um, he was uh, promoting the first season yep. of uh, his show, but he was telling us that he really hopes that they give him a second chance at a second season because they were pushing back on a lot of material and a lot of things mm-hmm. that he wanted to put inside of his show. You know, yep. so I really think that's that's dope. Um, the five episode first season of the series dropped on Netflix uh, February 15th and he's just happy in quotes he said the people have spoken and the most riveting captivating and polarizing show on Netflix is returning for season 2 so get ready for hijinks that only a mother can love thank you Netflix so I'm happy for him and just a fun fact he also is the executive producer along with Kenya Barris of his own show so I think that's dope yeah okay. man dropping a clue bombs with this yeah. table yeah Shout out to that young brother. Great young brother. Mm-hmm. Great yeah. young king he is. Salute to Kenya, too. Yep, yep, yep. Yo, I was watching the old interview of him, right? <laughs> With y'all. Mm-hmm. And this before I came, yo, you asked him, I think you asked him to freestyle. He was like, no, yo, I don't want to freestyle. <laughs> he, was like, <laughs> he was like, he hate when people ask him to do that. I remember that. I think I think and that's what I think I asked him. Yeah, probably. I know. A little irritating self. You straight asked him. He was like, no, I'm not doing it. I don't <laughs> think that I should be able to be put on the spot for freestyling. That was so funny. Mm. But yeah. Oh, and... um. Since I got like 10 more seconds. Yo, I will be in Bridgeport, Connecticut tonight and tomorrow. Get your tickets hey. at justalertsofficial.com. Now, Bridgeport, I told y'all I want y'all to act right this time. All right, y'all ain't do nothing to me, but y'all was fighting each other. And in all the that comedy stuff. club? Yeah, listen, in the parking lot, like outside. They didn't want to go home, but people was getting, yo, I blame the bartenders. Yo, they was getting the people. <laughs> so you didn't leave? You pulled over and watched them fight? Yeah, I wanted to pull oh, over. Okay. I was like, yo, this is crazy. But they was, they were serious. That was back when I was doing meet and greets too. They was getting drunk at the meet and greet and all that. They was like, Jess, we love you. They all go outside. It's a bunch of fights and all that. So. I do have to ask one question. Yeah. You don't do meet and greets anymore. Mm-mm. What happened? Because something had to happen. You was like, yeah, I didn't bring it. I was in Killeen. No, this was before that. I was in Killeen, Texas, and I got COVID from somebody. Oh, I, yep! I got COVID. I, I don't know who gave it to me, but I was in Colleen, Texas. And I knew. I, I just was looking at everybody. I knew everybody was sick too. <laughs> and I, mm, and I just, I knew it. Yo, the next day I got on the plane to go home. As soon as I landed, I was like hot, sweat, cold sweats, all that. I knew it, yo. People was coughing while I was telling jokes, and and they was people was looking sick. And then I hugged somebody. They was hot as hell. I was like, oh no, yo, this whole venue is sick. So after I know that, it. no more, no more. Damn. I can't, yo, and Clean especially Texas. now because I'm pregnant. pregnant. Okay, all yeah, right, yo. Well, that's Jess with the mess. Charlamagne, who you giving that donkey to? Man, four after the hour, I think we need to talk cannibalism, man. We'll discuss. All right, we'll get to. How did he be finding this? <laughs> no. All right, we'll get to it next. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Wake up. Wake up. You're locked into the Breakfast Club. Your execution on the donkey of the day is something to behold. Is it a read? He gave me donkey of the day and I deserve it. People need to know. Well, well, you need to tell them. I am. You have the voice. Tell them. Tell them. Tell them. Tell them. Tell them. It's time for donkey of the day. It's a read, <laughs> but you're so good at it. You're trying to be a fake ass Charlemagne. There's only one Charlemagne in the world. Charlemagne. Damn, Charlemagne. Who you give a donkey of the day to now? Well, Sexy Red, donkey of the day for Friday, March 31st. Uh, the last day of Mental Health Awareness Month goes to a young woman named Cheyenne. Cheyenne was a caller on an episode of Fifi, Fev, and Nick. Or is it Fifi, Fev, and Nick? Fifi, Fev, and Nick. What is Fifi, Fev, and Nick? It is an Australian morning show on 101.9 The Fox in Melbourne, Victoria, Australia. They have two men and a young lady. Set up just like the Breakfast Club, okay? Mm-hmm. And they had a very interesting caller this week, uh, and it was Cheyenne. Now, I don't know if this is real or not, but I have some experience with taking calls on radio, so I believe it is. Cheyenne called in to admit to doing something that I believe uh, we should discuss. Let's go to Fifi, Fee, and Nick in the morning for the call, please. I ate my nun. Ah! <laughs> 
stop, stop. Let me, let me stop. Stop. I just want y'all to know. She starts it off by saying, I ate my nana. You know what a nana is, right? Grandma. Grandma. Let's continue. I ate my nan. Ah! <laughs> uh, how did you eat your nan? So my nan passed away in August last year and got cremated. And obviously my family and myself were grieving. So went over to mum's one night and thought to cheer, up, cheer her up a bit. <laughs> Let's just taste nan. This is the part I've told nobody. My brother got out of jail not too long ago. Oh, and God. Thought it'd be funny to prank him, and I put some of Nan's ashes in the pasta sauce. Oh, sure, yes. <laughs> Spaghetti a la Nan. Right. <laughs> have, you have you got any left? Yeah, there's a whole box of her left. But oh, you're not, wow. can, have you stopped eating it? I'll say yes for your sake, Fifi. <sighs> you can hear the sincerity in her voice. She's she still got the ashes on her tongue, and my question is why? Why, why, why? You're supposed to be getting recipes from grandma, not adding grandma to the recipes, okay? How are you sitting around the house thinking this, thinking to yourself, you know what? I, I, you know what I could add to this pasta to really make it hit? Not garlic, not oregano, grandma's ashes. Can you imagine? No. Can you imagine grandma t telling your grandma you make a good pasta? Literally? <laughs> like, like, like instead of fettuccine alfredo, you got fettuccine our grandma. Instead of lasagna, you got la mama. Can you imagine, mm. imagine sprinkling big mama's ashes on the mac and cheese in New Orleans? Instead of a po' boy, you can get a shrimp po' po'. Like, we have to recognize that cannibals exist out here. In fact, I saw a story, a story in Baltimore where two cannibals were eating the clown and one cannibal turned to the other and asked, does this taste a bit funny to you? Did you see that story, Jeff? No, I didn't. Did Mommy tell you about that? No. Okay. You were going <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a really crazy world we in. Like, imagine coming over to Cheyenne's house to eat, and you say, I don't like your grandmother. And Cheyenne replies to you, well, try the potatoes. Okay? I don't know what's going on in the world anymore, guys. You know, sometimes I believe I have things figured out. Other times I realize I'm simply not hungry enough. See, when I start seeing y'all adding grandma to dishes, just lets me know I'm not really a fat ass like I think I am. I thought I was a trans big back, but I'm not. So on topics like this, I defer to the president of the Fat Lives Matter community, the boss of the Big Back Brigade, Big Mac. Oh, turn that wobble up for my guy. Why would y'all come with the... Oh! <laughs> Get in here! Get in here, Mac! How are you this morning, sir? Turn his mic on. Good morning. Good morning. How are you, sir? Wobble Big black and best. Baby. Okay. Baby. Now, did this make you hungry? This story. Uh, first off, this when as soon as I heard it, I was like, "Guess what race?" It? I know it was white people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Off, white people's pranks are a little different than black people. They, yeah. And this furthermore let me know that I'm never eating at white people's houses. Oh. Mm -hmm. Cause God forbid you over their house and they ask you if you want to try some Granny Smith apples. It's a Damn. whole different granny. <laughs> it's, a whole, it's your real granny. Facts. So granny nobody Smith wants that. Apple. You Might. over at white people's house, they like, yo, you want an Aunt Shirley Temple? Ooh. <laughs> like, <laughs> Ooh. I don't. I'm straight yeah, on that. Yeah, 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 yeah. The Granny Smith apple probably a piece of the grandma's ass cheek too. Mm -hmm. You know, a little apple. And it's wrapped in plastic like the like the couches. <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting. Cause think about somebody like Judge Judy. She got that thing, right? She got the thing. Absolutely. Right? right? So imagine that's the piece of the little apple. And But Judge Judy's a celebrity, <laughs> so if they start doing it to celebrities, you could go somewhere and get a Steph Curry chicken from white people's houses. Ooh. Yeah, sprinkle like a little Steph in there. I like that. It comes in threes. I like that. So you buy that. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, you all for cannibalism is what you're saying. Um, Not all the way. Mm. You know, I eat women, but I won't, you know what I mean? I won't eat men. Pause. There By the way, go. that's wild. Yeah. Imagine it's the end of the world, the apocalypse has come, and there's nothing left to eat but each other. Hi. And the only way to survive is to eat people. No, sir. And Max says, I'm not eating no men. No. Mm -hmm. I ain't putting Charlemagne in the air fryer. I'm, Man, I'm straight you on better that. put me in the air fryer and say pause after every bite. You already looked like you was in there too long. I'm like, damn, my <laughs> <laughs> Charlemagne is burnt. Hey, man, get your fat ass out of here, man. Okay, knock it off. Well <laughs> done over there. Yeah, you <laughs> Give Cheyenne the biggest hee haw, please. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Guy always goes too far. <laughs> All right. Yeah, he so can't really ghetto. go that far. They so ghetto, man. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you for that donkey mm -hmm. today. All right. You ready? That made me lose my appetite, though, for real. You're a liar. No, seriously. You I'm got not mad hot sauce over there. Yeah, what? but I, I'm not. What you was eating? 
I had um, a fried egg over hash brown with turkey bacon, and I don't hmm, even. You know think it's turkey anymore. bacon? That's Todd. Is that? <laughs> <laughs> <It's> Todd. <laughs> okay, that's who that is. You got your green juice, a ginger ale, and water. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, it's Friday, so you know what it means. It's, it's freaky, freaky, freaky Friday. Hey, yes. Hey, now the freaky, hey, freaky, freaky hey, Friday hey, question hey. comes from uh, a little bit of Candace Owens. So Candace Owens got on social media and said we should ban porn. But Charlemagne went a little deeper. Mm. What the hell you talking about? What you did? What do you mean? What, what did you think? What did you think about Oh, that? what I thought when I saw Candace say we should ban porn? Yeah. Oh, I said her husband got caught watching porn. <laughs> yeah. That's what oh, I thought immediately. Wow. I was like, damn, she must have just walked in and seen her husband watching porn and probably looked at the search and it was like big titty white women <laughs> and she <laughs> lost her mind. She was like, ban it all. It looks nothing yeah. like me, so let's ban tweet it all. I forgot what the tweet was. She, oh, I forgot what the exact tweet Candace did. What was the exact tweet? Hold on, let me and then where the hell did that come from? Just out of nowhere. It didn't come out of nowhere. I'm telling you, she probably caught her husband watching porn. Oh, she said, ban pornography. It is a psychological weapon intended to weaken our men. Oh, yeah, yeah. That <laughs> she definitely, definitely sounds she, she 100% she caught, caught her yeah, husband she caught watching big titty white women on, <laughs> on, on Pornhub. So let's open up the phone lines. 800-585-1051. Have you ever... Caught your significant other watching porn, your boyfriend, your girlfriend watching porn. Well, let's take it a step further. Have you ever caught a family member watching porn? Maybe you walked into somebody's room and it was your brother or your sister or your mom. Who knows? Yeah. Or your pops. Yeah. 800. Can we ask if pornography oh should be banned a little bit too? Does people feel this way? What's I'm pretty on? sure she's not the only one that feels this way. That's so, right. yeah, you can throw that in your answer too. But That's I do right. like the, I like both questions. Because know, porn is very way. accessible now. <laughs> like, there was, a, there was a time. <laughs> When you had to really fight as a as a child to watch porn, mm -hmm. like you know, I had the trapper keeper with like pictures of Penthouse and Playboy inside, yeah. right? To hide, we take it to school and look at it like yeah. that. Mm -hmm. But you know, now you could just literally go on Pornhub. Or just, yeah, just like I don't know what right you're talking there. about. It's free. I, I just go on the internet. <laughs> well, that's my point. Right. Yeah. yeah. So I we had to. Um, so 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 there's 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 something to what she's saying. I don't okay. think you should ban pornography, all but you together. should make it a little bit harder for people to uh, access. Because all you got to do is it'll ask you if you're 18 or old. All you do is lie. Yeah, I mean, then you can lie. Yeah. 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 Okay. 800-585-1054. <laughs> Let's discuss. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. That dude saved me, bro. Ran in my sack. Squirted the shit in my mouth. God damn, Boosie. It's Freaky Friday. God damn. The Breakfast Club. Freaky Friday. <laughs> It's freaky Friday. It's freaky. Call in now. 800-585-1051. We want to hear from you on The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Jess. Hilarious Charlemagne the guy. We are The Breakfast Club. It's Friday, so you know what that means. It's freaky, 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 freaky Friday. And the freaky, freaky, freaky Friday question comes from, it actually sparked from Candace Owens. Mm -hmm. uh, she posted a, a tweet or put it on Instagram that you know, porn should be banned. Well, let's That's read her. Crazy. Let's read her tweet in full. Let's what did not, she say? Let's let's not uh, you know take her out of context. Candace Owens said, "Oh, hold on." Candace Owens said, um, "I'm pulling it up." She said, "Ban pornography. It is a psychological weapon intended to weaken our men." This was on 3:10 p.m. at May 21st, 2024. Now, let me tell you what I believe happened here. Okay. Candace Owens is home, minding her business, doing what she do. Uh, she walked in on her husband looking at pornography in the middle of the day. It was nothing like that. And her. it pissed her the hell off. Now, it might have been <laughs> she either looked, caught him in the middle of the day, or she caught him the night before and decided to post about it the next day. But I believe this came from a very personal place. Mm. I believe she really caught her husband looking at porn and they had a discussion about it. And, you know, she probably went through the search history of the porn on Pornhub. Mm -hmm. And it was women that looked nothing like her. Nothing like <laughs> her. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I think that really, 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 really caused her to go to Twitter and tweet this. Okay. But there is something to it. Now, I, I, I didn't see yeah. any nuance to what she said because I only see this one tweet. But I do think porn might be too accessible. Yeah, yeah I, it is, I agree it, it is too you. accessible. I agree. I agree. When you could just go to a website and like Charlemagne said, click that you're over 18. Mm -hmm. Like it's not like they got to be like, well, you know, it's not like you got to put your ID or anything yeah. like that. You just click it and you, you walk right in. You just come right know. in. And you so can see think anything on Pornhub. Mm -hmm. You yeah. can type in damn near anything. Like and what? Come what do you type in mm -hmm. usually? What do I type in usually? <laughs> what are you talking about? I like Ebony's. I go to, I look at Ebony's. That's my thing. Ebony, <sighs> big, big Ebony's. Okay. You big probably, ones? You, yeah. He probably like and older Ebony's. Y'all know I love big backs. 
older, older big oh, bags. Okay, that's what's up. That's the new spin. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we have Raquel on the line. Did I say your name right? Raquel. It's Raquel. Oh, I'm sorry, Shaquille. He's Raquel. Raquel. Uh, Do you agree with Candace Owens? No, she says she caught her three-year-old watching porn. Damn. Oh, my God, three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is like, he's about to be 13 now. Um, but, yeah, I was in the kitchen one night. I was watching dishes. I know how y'all are on cable, how they have, like, the little channels that you can, like, actually purchase porn and shit. So he was bad. He was always like behind movies and stuff back then. At three? So I was washing dishes at three. Yes, at three. Mm. <laughs> so uh, I was washing dishes and I looked back in the room. I saw like the door was open and then I looked back and saw that it was closed. So I was like, what is he doing? So I walk in the room and all I see is butt nakedness. Penis and vagina. I was like, I freaked out. Like, oh my gosh, where is the remote? <laughs> so, mm, wow. From, from so, then, are then you a I grandma heard, yet? Are you a grandma yet? No, okay. I'm only 35. He's only 13. He's about to be 13 in October. So okay. No, I'm not a grandma yet. Imagine what he's looking. <laughs> imagine what he's looking at now. Ten years later, he probably like, man, ain't none of this amusing. I've been doing this. <laughs> but you know what's so scary about this is this is talking about exactly what we're saying. Porn is too, too accessible. Yeah, that's what Candace should have said. You know, mm -hmm. shit, like like don't just can't just say ban pornography. Yeah. You can't ban all pornography, but it is too accessible. A three year old being able to find and that porn? was ten years ago. Yeah, oh my years ago. god! But you know, he's thirteen. To about I would say my daughter when she was young did the same thing, but she typed in Britney. I think it was Britney Spears. Mm -hmm. And there's, I guess, at the time there was porn people playing their favorite characters, dressing up like oh, Britney yeah, Spears, yeah. dressing up like J Lo, dressing up like Kim yeah. Kardashian. So I remember I went to her thing one time, and it had Britney Spears, and it was a porn star named mm. Britney Spears. Mm. So it was kind of the same thing. She, it was very accessible at the time. Jesus. Mm. But we got we got Sarah on the line. Sarah, good morning, Sarah. Hello. Hey, Sarah. Now you caught your your man watching porn? Yes, I have. And what happened, Sarah? I will watch it with him. Okay. I'll finish it off. Oh, hey. Okay. See what? She'll finish it off. I mean, why uh, not? Why not? Now, Sarah, it's, it's, it's it, only says, right. it says that you was watching him. Uh, he was watching Big Titty White Women. Yep. Yes. yes. Uh, with tattoos, taking it in the OVO. Oh, the, the other, other, uh, the other vaginal option. option. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes, sir. That's, I think Candace, yes, on, sir. I think Candace Owens' husband was looking at big titty white women too. Yeah, I think so too. <laughs> that's what I, that's what I really think. I really think that's what pissed Candace off. She was like, "Oh hell no!" Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah we're not banning porn. Yeah. We're not banning porn over here. Your husband's in the car. Can we speak to him right fast? Yes, he's right here. Hey, what's up, bro? Yes, bro. Yes, bro. Now you were watching porn, and you the, the ladies that you were watching doesn't look like your wife, or do they look like your wife? Oh, they do, they do. Okay. So your wife is a big they titty do. white woman. I mean, I'm not, I'm not against, I'm not against, I'm, you know, I, mean, I like them all, but specifically, I like, you know, I mean, the big, the big breasted, beautiful women. You know, they don't, they don't just fall out the sky, you know. But she said, she said, it was, she said it was white women you was looking at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, Sarah's white. Yesterday. Oh, your wife is white. Her name's Sarah. Yeah, and it has Hispanic too. Oh, oh okay. So he was looking at yeah, he was, yeah. I, I thought Sarah was black. He was looking at yeah, white women. Nah, oh, okay, nah, my nah. bad, brother. Go ahead, do you? Nah, I was, I was, I was, I was looking at the uh, you know, the, the, the emo joint. Dr. Umar does not approve. So. Definitely doesn't approve. Oh, Thank my you, God. 800 585 1051. If you're just joining us, we're asking Should porn be banned? Now, this conversation comes from Candace Owens. Mm -hmm. yeah, and Candace Owens said that she, uh, she tweeted out. Born. Why? She tweeted she out. Ban. She said, Ban pornography. It is a psychological weapon intended to weaken our men. Damn. Yeah. I ain't going to I ain't when Chris watches it a lot. Chris watches it a lot. Yo, and that was accessible on X. Twitter. Oh yeah, I heard a lot of porn, porn on next. Twitter. Yeah, and he be on Twitter, mm. so I be like, um, what's up? What kind of woman he be looking at? <laughs> 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 I'm just asking, what kind of woman he be looking at? Black and Mexican women. <laughs> uh, okay, okay. <laughs> we'll take your calls when we come back. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. It's Freaky Friday. Hey, look, where are my freaks at? Call in now. 800-585-1051. We want to hear from you on The Breakfast Club.
Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Jess Hilarious, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Now, if you're just joining us, uh, we're talking. Well, it's Friday, so you know what that means. It's, it's freaky, 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 freaky Friday. And the freaky, freaky, freaky Friday question comes from Candace Owens a little bit. All right, she posted a tweet that she wanted porn banned. Right. Yes, she said yes, she that. Did. She said, ban pornography. It is a psychological weapon intended to weaken our men. Now, I think there's a lot of nuance to that tweet that I ha- I didn't see her get into because I didn't see the whole thread because I don't be on Twitter. But what I think is Candace Owens caught her husband watching porn. Mm. And I think that that was more of an emotional tweet after mm-hmm. a discussion mm-hmm. because the nuance of it is, do I think porn is too accessible? Yes. Mm. Yeah, but you can't ban pornography. It shouldn't be p- banned, though. And I don't think it, I don't think it's psychologically weakening all men. I think that you know, porn serves a purpose. We know why we watch porn. Right now, there are people who are addicted to it. Right. Yeah, but it's and not. There are couples that watch it together. That's, that's right. right. So <laughs> to get together, together, <laughs> together. President Chris accent. What the hell wrong with you? You really try to? You really? Well, you really present for your next family reunion? <laughs> <laughs> Brandy. Hello. Hey, Brandy. Good morning. Hey, girl. Good morning. How you feeling? I'm good. How y'all doing? Blessed, black, and highly favored, man. Now, on a note, it says you you caught your dad watching porn. Uh, yeah. Well, I, I didn't catch him in the act, but he got caught for sure. How he got caught for sure? So, yeah. So, while well, I was 13, so this is back in the you know the day of VHS, and um, yes, I was man. watching the movie, and I had to leave. So I'm like, all right, bet you know you just stop the movie. I'm gonna come back, pick up where I left off. Get back home, I sit down with my snacks, turn my movie back on, and it's not Rugrats in Paris. It's Damn. two dudes and a girl. I don't know if they was in Paris, but they definitely was on the trip. Mm. <laughs> did yeah. You, did you confront them? Yeah. I, I did, but it was like it was years later. It was actually like maybe a few years ago. I told him, and he just was shocked. He was looking at me like, what? I'm like, uh, yeah, you got caught. See, the, thing <laughs> I, the, the, thing, the thing I don't like about this story, you ain't tell us how you watched the whole tape, though. You yeah. ain't tell us how you... <laughs> You ain't tell us how you ain't take the tape out to put your movie back in. Right. You watched that porn. I watched a few minutes. I'm not gonna lie. I, I did. I was. I was. I was 13. I was curious. You know. So yeah. I don't see the problem. <laughs> Jesus Christ. What's Yo, the problem? But I remember yeah, no, I that era. Single dad, he was doing what he was doing, but at, at 13, I was just like, no, he's innocent. He can't yeah. be watching this. You look at your dad like, you don't, you don't look at your dad like that, especially not that damn young. Yeah. You're like, nah. Right. Yeah, not even realizing them pawns is what helped you get here. What helped you get right? here. He had your mama just like that. Yes, yes. I remember that era. It used to be a box of tapes in my parents' um, closet. Mm-hmm. And I'm telling you, I used to like go in there and like watch them. Jesus. And yeah, it was crazy. Tara, good morning. <laughs> you, why you look so happy about <laughs> yeah, she it? Was, yeah. morning, morning, morning. Beautiful childhood memories, huh, Jess? <laughs> Tara, now, uh, should porn be banned? That's what we're asking this morning. Of course not. It should not be banned. Mm-hmm. It shouldn't be banned because if you're old enough to watch it, you should be able to watch it. Don't talk about that. Don't, 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 don't. Granddad, let me talk, Granddad. Um, <laughs> I think you should be able to... Don't turn out there now because when me and Grandmama don't have a you don't watch the video tape. Granddad, you wait. Um, I'm sorry. So you schizophrenic? My, yeah. My husband and I, when I first met him, I used to sit on my porch forever. But anyway, when I was able to get off the porch, my husband, which was my boyfriend back then, I went to his house and he put a porn in. It was Vanessa Del Rio. And I was like, oh my God, what? It was, it was fine because people like, like to tell lies and stuff. If it's going to get you excited, if it's Spanish fly porn, whatever, they like it. You know, you don't want to, sometimes you need something to, you know, turn you on. And if that's going to turn you on, that turns you on. I mean, come on. You don't want to just lay in bed and nothing's happening. If you're you're you right. Get the place started, something has to get the place started. So okay. if it's another woman, another guy, the only thing that I really, um, like, I, I used to feel bad about was when the guys would come out with, like, three trees, and, and they had to hold, hold it because it was so big, and you'd be like, oh, my God, you know, um, you don't even know if it's real or not, but it was so, I mean, it was huge. It wasn't was real. Like, that's so hater. Uh, it wasn't well, real. You're a hater. It wasn't real. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm not trying to say anything. I'm just saying, you know, uh, that that part, I think a lot of men used to get okay. intimidated. But, you know. Well, thank you, Tara. As long as you're, you're welcome. Thank you, Tara. Tell granddad we said peace. Keep on going. Does she have a grandfather? Well, I was confused. Oh, no, I think that I was I think her. she was schizophrenic. Me too. Yeah, that she was, was just her. going voices in the head. Mm-hmm. Personality disorder. Well, that's just, it's probably like 
a act that she does. That's something that she probably stage like she do something. Like oh, that. it's like the Hulk, like you know the uh, Bruce Banner. Yeah, in and out of the Hulk. You and know? then when I hear that, Jess, and you see I'm confused, you got to tell me because I was like, what yeah. the hell? I'm like, because at first, no, I thought it was, but then she was like, granddad, granddad, because they wasn't ever talking at the same time, so she like wants some ventriloquist ish. Gotcha. I don't know. All right, well, what's the moral of the story, guys? Moral of the story is uh, porn should not be banned. Um, mm -hmm. I do think it is too accessible, though. Yeah. I do think it's too accessible. You know, as that woman mm -hmm. called earlier, a three-year-old being able to find porn, and that was on TV 10 years ago. Yeah. Now, you all you got to do is pick up your phone and but, yeah. lie and say you 18, and you can be looking at anything. But, but how do you get around it, right? Because uh, on some of these sites, I'm, I'm sure nobody's ever going to want to put in their ID. Would you mm. put in your ID to watch some porn? And that's like uh, something new that they're actually starting. Didn't one of us report that before? I think that was, mm -hmm. whether it was in Front Page News or Justin Mess or something, they were saying that you have to now, like, scan your ID for certain sites. Mm. Well, not now. It's not in effect yet, but mm. in the future, it will be. Mm. But yeah, no, nobody's going to mm. want that. Mm -mm. I'm never doing that. Mm. I'm going to just keep sticking with Pornhub, X videos, and X and X. Okay. All right. Well, when we come back, we got past the aux. Uh, DJ Nala will be joining us. Oh, so we're going to kick yeah. it with her when we come back. It's The Breakfast Club. Come on. Time for Pass the Ox. Go, let's go. What's up, Nala? What's up, guys? Hey, How girl. are you? Big okay. Nyla. Yes. Did he just scare you? You look like he just scared you when he did that. No, I'm I'm used to this. Oh, okay. Here. All right. So I'm gonna start off with slower music and then pick it up. Okay. Um, right. it's this artist named Chosen. He's originally from Florida, mm -hmm. but he did a remixes record called Diamonds with the artist who's out of Jersey. Super beautiful record. I think it's like a wedding record. So I just want to start with that. Okay, Chosen. That. I feel like I heard like some music that. from Chosen before. I we forgot have, what it was. We played Chosen a bit before. We really? Mm -hmm. Good. I love that. He's an upcoming artist. I had him perform at the last Certified Vibe in Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. um, but seeing him live, I watched him hit these high notes, and I was just amazed. So Dope. <laughs> We can sing in person, too. He can live. sing. Yes. That's mm -hmm. what's up. In real life. You've been coughing for 97 days. <laughs> yeah, we yeah. And can't, like, what's going on? And, and you keep uh, coughing over here. <laughs> You've been coughing for 97 days. What's the problem? Please leave me alone. All right. <laughs> Next is another upcoming artist. He's out of Georgia. And I really like this record. I think it's a certified sleeper. He only has like 6,000 followers on the gram. I ain't want to do this because all the A&Rs keep stealing the artists I'm finding. I feel like I'm doing mm. the job for them. But this record is tough. It's called Can't Wake Up. Fire. Yeah. Fire. What was the girl saying? I listened to the Breakfast Club. <laughs> no. no. She was like, can't, can't wake up. up. Can't, I can't wake, wake up. up. That was me last night. Yo, I had a nightmare. <laughs> I was trying to wake up, y'all. So <laughs> <can't wake> <laughs> I was trying to nightmare about. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> nope, nope, nope. Don't do it. Don't fall for it. No. But shout out to Ahmad. I love that record. I wanted to do two more. One is Vince Staples with Radio. I know you always say Radio's not dead. You know, this is an ode to Radio. Ooh. I love Vince Staples. Mm -hmm. It sounds like he popped like 30 perks, though. <laughs> 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 two calls. Yeah, I do like him, yo. And his uh, show was just renewed on Netflix. Yes, oh, yeah. it that's was. Right. Yeah, so shout out to this record as well. Yeah, that's what's up. Yep. And he just hit the stage at Gazebo Festival, Jack Carlos Festival last week. Weekend in Kentucky. Mm -hmm. White Cheller. Oh my God. White Creamville. Ah. Creamville. Creamville Festival. Oh my God. It's kind of stupid. Hey, man. It's it's kind of stupid. Of the weekend. How Creamville? I'm like, leave Creamville. me alone. <laughs> How's Creamville? <laughs> kind of stupid. Oh my God. Shout out to Jack Harlow. Yes. No, nah, it was really, it was really cool. Um, and a white man with a festival sponsored by Kentucky Fried Chicken. That's crazy. Uh -uh. Is it? It's yes. From, Kentucky Fried Chicken is from Kentucky, well, he's from isn't Kentucky, it? But it, it just says it's funny. It just sounds crazy. <laughs> oh, Jack from Kentucky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Gotcha. I, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> don't, don't make this racist. I didn't. Too late. <laughs> and then last but not least is obviously Wanna Be Remix featuring Cardi B. Cardi don't give a damn about the radio remix. Uh, Cardi don't give a damn about the radio edit. You hear me? No, nope. she don't. Curse. Nope. I'm gonna have to listen to the explicit version when I get in the car because I know she ate it up. It Cardi B will fire back at anybody. Crazy. And, and Bia probably shouldn't respond. Yeah. Because she shot first. Right? Yeah. So it's, it's a good even exchange. It doesn't right? work like that. I don't think that they're the two artists that I would want to see go back and That's forth. That's how I feel. I, I don't feel even like, no. care about this beef. Yeah. I don't. I'm like, uh-uh. Cardi just took a shot. I don't think it's going to be a beef. He just took yeah, a shot. Yeah, it shouldn't be. I, but like I you know. said, you don't think she should say anything mm -hmm. or if she well, do, get yeah, somebody else to write it. I said the Dreezy song. Cardi's just replying back. It is what it is. Now yeah. it should just be Leave done. Leave it at that. Yeah. All right. I mean, I feel like 
the Dreezy song this I feel like the internet really created the beef and then prior to that I think mm. it's just because the whole lot of money remix with Nicki Minaj and you know mm. once you're team Nicki you're team Nicki and then once you're team Cardi like you're you team can't Cardi. like both it's so weird it's whack mm. Mm. so but either way I still think Meg had the best verse on that on, on Wanna Be on Wanna Be remix I think it was Cardi B Me- Meg did eat but I gotta listen to the explicit version to give so the verdict give on it. the remix okay yeah I'm All disappointed right. in you I, oh. yo Meg <laughs> If you make me want to learn that the, the white god released a record today and you didn't play Eminem? Mm. Yeah, shut up. So if if you <laughs> drop up. a rap verse and make me want to learn all the words to it, I feel like you are the winner because I don't learn lyrics anymore. Mm-hmm. But I heard that and was like, oh, let me run it back to learn the words. I like Anyway, all right. Um, make sure you guys follow me on Instagram at Nyla Simone. We got playlists dropping. Um, updated every week and then of course we got monthly live showcases with some of your favorite artists like Chosen who we played today and um, I'm tapping in with that new artist of mine who did Can't Wake Up nice big Nyla alright thank you Nyla of course all right. I would have got Eminem on, in on the mix, but we throwing it back this morning on a Friday. Wait, <laughs> what? <laughs> it's the I know y'all be doing Freaky Friday, but that sounds crazy. Sounds crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ! It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Jess Hilarious, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Let me salute to uh, Lakeisha at American Dream Mall. Mm-hmm. Now, her name is not Lakeisha. I called her Lakeisha. Her name is Keisha. Yes. And they've been making fun of her at the American Dream and be like, your name La Keisha, your name La Keisha. Her name oh is Keisha. Oh, my God. People make fun of anything. So, salute to Keisha at uh, American Dream Mall if you ever need anything over there. I actually, my kids are learning how to ski there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I tried to ski up. one time. I fell and hurt myself. It has never been the same, but they're learning how to ski over there, and I, and, and I enjoy watching them learn how to ski. It's, it's a sport that we usually don't do. Is mm-hmm. that a sport? Skin is a sport, right? Yeah, definitely. It's, it's yeah, a sport. Is a sport. It's a sport that we usually don't do. So the fact that they're learning and they're actually enjoying it is pretty, pretty, pretty dope. That's dope. Now, where are you going to be at this weekend, Jess? Bridgeport, Connecticut. Now, listen, I think I was getting it mixed up with Hartford, Hartford, Connecticut, because mm-hmm. they was the ones fighting. So okay. Bridgeport, I'm sorry, Bridgeport, Bridgeport, Bridgeport. Yeah, Bridgeport was like, we didn't do that. No, that was Hartford, Hartford, and then I went to New Haven before. It's, it's all all parts of Connecticut. Okay. Is 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 uh kind of like Baltimore a little bit, but yeah. I'll be there tonight and tomorrow. We got two shows tonight and two shows tomorrow. One at seven thirty, one at nine. Then the other one tomorrow is seven thirty and nine as well. Get your tickets at Jessalar. Official.com. I will be there. All right. And Charlemagne, you at you, you at this weekend? Are you? Uh, I'm not anywhere this weekend. Okay. Uh, but I do just want to say thank you to everybody who has been going out and buying my book, Get Honest or Die Lying. I did debut uh, at number nine on USA Today's best selling book list. So thank you uh, for making me a bestseller again with my new book, Get Honest or Die Lying Why Small Talk Sucks. You know, number nine mm-hmm. out of 150 books. Uh, for the week is no small feat so thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you um, make sure you just go out there and continue to get it man uh, wherever you buy books the audio is available too uh, you know I do my own stunt so I read my own book so thank you and I'll see y'all next week the next place I'm going to be is in uh, D.C. I'm going to be in D.C. at um, the Ark on mm-hmm. oh, I'll tell you right now Let me. you know where the Ark at Jess? no you don't? No, I know where DC at, but I don't know where the Ark is. We all know where DC at. Right? <laughs> DC at. Yes. The Ark, uh, June 4th at 7 p.m., I'll be at the Ark with Books for Sale by Mahogany Books, okay? Mm-hmm. And uh, Angela Rye will be moderating that conversation. So we'll be at the Ark, June 4th, 7 p.m., Angela Rye moderating. Um, yeah, go to WhySmallTalkSucks.com for more information on that. All right, when we come back, we got the positive note. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Jess Larry, Charlamagne the guy. We are the Breakfast Club. It's time to get up out of here. Charlamagne, you got a positive note? I do. The positive note is simply this, man. Uh, you know what? My book is called Get Honest or Die Line. Why Small Talk Sucks. I want you to know our lives improve only when we take chances. And the first and most difficult risk we can take is to be honest with ourselves. Okay, that's what integrity is. Integrity is telling myself the truth. Honesty is telling the truth to other people. Are you are you a person of integrity? Huh? 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 Ask yourself that question this weekend. Have a blessed day. Breakfast club, bitches! Y'all finished or y'all done?